Jason. Good block. You see Mr. Dice over there. Challenging. Arizona recruited two junior college fullbacks, and they use them in situations like this. Third and three, the give is to Taylor through the middle. Enough for the first down inside the five-yard line. First and to goal, Wildcats. Dimitri Gazelis finally brought him down. Taylor's off to a pretty good start. I think with, with the G. Taylor's chance to, to run the football, Vaughn and Levy are out of there, but you can just see the way he runs. He runs with a little more confidence. Much stronger this year than last year. Excellent speed. So, again, that running back position for Arizona, uh, very good depth. All right, first and goal at the four-yard line. Arizona came away empty last time they were this close. They pound the ball through the middle. Let's see where the spot is. They're going to mark them at the two-and-a-half, maybe the three-yard line. Nathan Young, the free safety, came up and made the initial stop, number two. Got some additional help. From Brad Stammer. A pair of fresh running backs in for the Wildcats. Billy Johnson along with Lamont Lovett. Taylor in his first start. 10 carries, 63 yards. Antoine Carter last week had 20 carries for 47 yards. And he's got a couple of hurt ribs to show for it. Pitch to Johnson. The Pacific lead has been eclipsed. Johnson gets the touchdown, but Lamont Lovett threw the block. His running mate in the Arizona backfield. So Billy Johnson with Arizona's first touchdown tonight. Arizona had six to three. Let's take another look. Lovett, number 34, good block. Well, Lamont's a senior. You know, he's had uh, probably more playing time earlier in his career, but uh, so far this year with Levy and Vaughn Hurt, they're getting some good playing time again. And McLaughlin makes it seven. Billy Johnson and company up now, 7-3 over the Tigers. I see you have a pager. Yes, I use it so my business clients can reach me. Does your pager have statewide coverage like Tucson paging? No. Does it reach Las Vegas or Northern Sonora like Tucson Paging? Well, no. Does it come in designer colors like these from Tucson Paging? No, it doesn't. Then you should call Tucson Paging at 747-8700. Say, do you work for Tucson Paging? As a matter of fact, I do. Thanks. I'll call right now. Say, I noticed you have a pager. A family grows. They learn from each other and depend on each other. With life insurance from the Farmers Insurance Group, your family can depend on protection now while you put money away for your retirement, for safety today and security tomorrow. Farmers Insurance Group, for life. We know how to help you save during the Dodge 93 model clearance. Take this shadow. It comes with all kinds of stuff, like AM FM stereo, automatic, air conditioning, and $13.50 in total savings. That's a lot of car for under 9.6. Is this correct? Absolutely. See your Southern Arizona. The Wildcats waited till there were 11 minutes and 53 seconds remaining in the first half before they score, but that's our position now. Seven to three, Arizona. Out in front of the Pacific Tigers. There's a little twist to tonight's game. You take a look at the scoring drive. Eight plays, 65 yards. Wildcats running off nearly four minutes off the clock. And uh, no passes in that drive. They showed passing early. And maybe that's helped them with the running game now. They've become a little more consistent. Only 116 yards rushing last week. Uh, it looks like they'll have a chance to eclipse that here in the first half. Steve McLaughlin, a low line drive in and then out of the end zone. The Tigers will take over first and 10 at their own 20. Oh, you can tell Steve is not quite back yet from that missed field goal. But he felt that one just like he's supposed to. I was going to say just an interesting twist as the Tigers come back onto the field. Just as we're going to talk about Dave Hennigan, Craig Wheelahan is coming in. 
Wheelahan and Hennigan traded off last week as well. Hennigan quarterbacked the Tigers for six drives. He's got a very strong arm. He's a good runner, but they're not sure of his experience level. Nice and rangy, good athlete. The kind of guy you probably like playing quarterback. He's going to throw on first down. Good, strong arm. Ball is tipped, knocked away, and nearly picked off. Weston was the intended receiver. The Wildcat defenders included Jay Phillips and Tony Bowie almost picked up his second interception of the year after the tip by Phillips and Weston. He does have a live arm, yeah. Coach. Good, strong throw. Ball got there quick, nice and high. Jay Phillips, about 6-2. Pretty good matchup over there. <laughs> Eleven forty-seven to go in the half. Second and ten for Wheelahan and company. Throwing on second down. Good release. Pass is completed. That'll be a first down. In the last time Pacific played in the stadium, they threw forty-two passes, completed thirty. And that uh, year, two years ago, they were uh, more of a run and shoot team. But the way they're throwing tonight. There you see Greg Weston, as we mentioned, he wasn't even on the two deep early in the week. He's a redshirt freshman from Corona, California, 5'10", 175 pounder. Warner Smith in the offensive line having a chat. Ch chat. Give this time to the fullback, Rogers. He's knocked out of bounds. Pick up of two yards. That'll bring up second down and eight. Sean Harris drove him out of bounds. As we indicated, Arizona gave up a minus eight yards rushing last week. And uh, as we got 10 minutes to go in the half here, or 11 right now, Pacific uh, probably doesn't have more than eight or nine right now. Rogers in motion. Wheel of hand. Grant Moyer, 6'2", 233 pounds, the senior psychology major. There's no psychology involved in that. He just sprinted to the quarterback. Well, a good, solid tackle. You know, last year at this time, Grant Boyer really wasn't uh, that much in the mix. He was kind of sharing that spot with Charlie Camp. Now, Charlie Camp was hurt last week and has a really sore tailbone. They're not sure whether it's broken or uh, just bruised, but they got to treat it pretty much the same way. They'd probably like to keep him out of this ball game too, if they can. So Boyer and uh, Harris will get a lot of playing time. Third and a long, 18 to go for the first down. Wheel a hand to throw. Lobs a duck. Wright almost had the interception. A lot of almost intercepted balls tonight, Coach. He's under a lot of pressure. That really wasn't a well-thrown ball. When you throw it up like that, uh, uh, liable for for anybody to catch it. Well, here's Brant Boyer, number 48. Now watch what he does to Wheelahan. Kind of a uh, delayed, kind of a blitz. <laughs> All right, Jason Scouting into the ball game. A roller. This is Terry Vaughn this time. Vaughn is leveled, just inside his 50-yard line. So the Wildcats get the football in good field position. We'll be back to Arizona Stadium. 9.43 remain in the first half. Oil, the lifeblood of your engine. So the most vital organ is your oil filter. That's why you need Fram Extra Guard. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter. Fram Extra Guard, the best protection ever. This guy really gets around. He's got the auto light. American or import, we're guaranteed. Two years, no matter how far he goes. That's why we've been everywhere. Wow! It's coming. The new, improved taste of triple cereal. A taste that's so much bigger, you can't help but notice. A taste that's better, because those crisps are bigger, crispier, and tastier than ever before. But we don't want you to take our word for it, so we're sending out millions of samples to prove it. 
which means we had to squeeze a big new taste into a little box. Try new improved triples today. Bigger, better taste. A little love, a little love. Why is it always the same old story? Why ask why? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry. When it comes to a great beer, we wrote the book. Wildcats at the 48-yard line. Dan White remains a quarterback. Arizona heads 7-3 at Arizona Stadium. The give is to Gary Taylor. Good blocking on the right side. That's enough for a first down. Grant Carter. Name we've called several times already. Made the stop. Well, Taylor already has 63 yards in this football game. And uh, add another 15 for him. He's getting close to 100. So Arizona might have a back or two that gets 100 yards rushing. Arizona's seventh first down of the first half. 9.27 remain. The give. Taylor going to reverse his field. A little improvisation. Does he have the speed to get outside? Yep. He turned a loss into a gain all by himself. Busted play. Jeff Russell, the free safety. Made a stop. That's 11 plays for Arizona, all on the ground. They gave up in that passing game early. They showed passing game. Now they've been back to the run uh, all through this quarter and uh, the last part of that first quarter. With a Big Ten opponent on the road next week, you know they're going to have to go back and try to work it tonight. So we'll see if they do that anytime soon. Taylor perhaps shaken up. A lot of eye formation for Arizona. Pitch is to love it. With some room, he stays on his feet in a seam inside the 20-yard line. Jason Patterson threw some great blocks. Grant Carter, who else, finally made the stop. So Lamont Lovett, the senior from Franklin High School in Los Angeles. And they take number 46 right there. That's Lamont Love. I mean, that's uh, Jason Patterson. That's probably his best run at Arizona since the USC game uh, two years ago where he had a 27-yarder. He also accumulated 52 yards in that game. That's a great outing for him. On first down. Johnson. Inside the 10-yard line. Russell had to come up to make the stop. They spot him down at the eight. And the Wildcats have some house money to play with right now. Second down and two from the eight. You see that great balance displayed by Lamont Lovett. Second and two from the eight. Out of the eye once again. White to the first man, Johnson. Penalty flag quickly. Might be a mask. Well, I think uh, maybe Hisham again, the center. He kind of rooted that guy. He was on his nose right out of there, but he kind of held him a little bit, it looked like, as he pulled him over there. Right you are. All right, watch Hisham El Mashtu, the Wildcats center, number 75, in the middle of your screen. Moved to center last Hitting year. On the offense. Uh, Ten yards. Five games into the season. He just wrestled him right down there. He's oh, held that spot. Very physical kind of player. Came to Arizona as a defensive player. Tried to make a nose guard out of him. And moved him to offense, and he's found a home as a center. That'll be a topic of discussion at halftime, you can be sure. Arizona penalized heavily in the first half. Second down now. 13 to go for the first. The ball now at the 19-yard line. Toss is to Billy Johnson, right side. Good run by Johnson. He gets plenty of it back. So Johnson performing as a workhorse now in the first half. Darius Cunningham, the left cornerback, came up to make the stop. Out of the tailback, you know, just power football. All pack, honorable mention. Last year. 
hit that bad ankle during Achilles' heel that uh, slowed him down for a while. All right, straight ahead, and the Tigers were waiting. That's a happy Owen Taylor, senior, nose tackle, number 72. Crowd wanting Dick Tomey to go for seven. However, the coach decides to try for three. Again, you see the emphasis on the run. Uh, no passes on that drive. And McLaughlin missed from 21. He's trying from 26 this time. From 26 yards. And the Wildcats now up for the Tigers by a score of 10 to 3. We'll be back right after this. Jack Furrier's Western Tire Centers, me and my car's best friend. A friend to the end, I can't deny it. Service I can recommend. Me and my car go back a long, long time. Jack Furrier's always been there. Jack Furrier's Western Tire Centers. Me and my car's best friend. Yeah. More people look to the Arizona Daily Star for news and information than any other source in Southern Arizona. And that's because no one brings you more hard news or more useful information than the Star. Seven days a week, Southern Arizona's largest news gathering organization works for you. There's much to know, and we can help you understand it. There's much to do, and we can help you do it. Let's talk CDs. Not some single disc, five disc, or 10 disc player. I'm talking two, four, 24 CDs. Wow, that's a score plus four. A double dozen digital jukebox. You play your favorite 24 CDs on this player and your clothes will be out of style before the music stops. And you get it at your Get It Today store, RTO, rent to own. RTO has this incredible 24 disc CD changer with 100 watt stereo for just $17.99 a week. Free delivery today, $17.99. Look us up in the white pages under RTO. Travel accommodations provided by Bon Voyage Travel. Follow the Wildcats to the UCLA, Cal, and ASU away games. Call Bon Voyage Travel at 797-CATS. Well, the crowd enjoying themselves tonight. Ladies night, young man, get out of the way. We want to see something a lot better looking than you. And we're getting that tonight. Nice crowd on hand despite the rains, the lightning, and all here. For the second game of the season, Arizona had uh, 44,000 on hand to see Dick Tomey pick up his 100th win as a head coach last week. The Wildcats picking up three points. Dee McLaughlin capped the drive with a 26-yard field goal. Seven plays, 43 yards, time three minutes, 46 seconds. 5.57 remain coach in the first half. And last uh, scoring drive, nine plays, so they've been very consistent, but both scoring drives, no passing. Jesse Campbell and Stanley Green in return formation for the Tigers. Wildcats getting ready to kick again. Not too many kickoffs returned when Steve McLaughlin puts the foot to it so far this season, replacing Jake Kirkhoff, who had that responsibility last year. And he's got a little wind, and he can get it up there, although this is going to be a little short. Returnable. This is Stanley Green. And the defensive teams do their job. The Tigers will start inside their own 20-yard line. However, there is a handkerchief on the field. And the Tigers are applauding. We saw the Pacific fullback, Daryl Rogers, on the field very happy. Looks like Arizona offside. Wildcats have a reasonable lead in rushing so far tonight. The Wildcats coming into the game as the number one defense in against the rush. Against the well, they only had 116 game. yards total. Well, the Wildcats made an error on the kickoff. A five-yard penalty. They'll kick it from the 30-yard line. And the one yard we saw for Pacific, uh, counting the sacks and uh, any yardage they've made, uh, 
you know, very impressive. Arizona already going into this ball game, allowing minus eight yards rushing, number one in the nation. And uh, if they maintain this pace in this ball game, but they should also stay at number one. A little programming note for our Fox 11 AMSB audience tomorrow night: the premiere of Townsend Television, starring Robert Townsend. And after that, you can see Martin. All begins tomorrow night, 6 o'clock on Fox 11 KMSB. The Wildcats premiered last week. Here they are in game two, and here's their second kickoff of this series of kickoffs. This time, McLaughlin lofts one. They get it to the up man. Balls bobble down to the floor, and Pacific retains possession. A little different kind of kick, almost like a pooch kick, just kicking it up high, giving your defensive team a chance to get under very quick and maybe possibly get a fumble or a real good hard hit and almost successful for Arizona. This is becoming quite a Saturday night for the crowd. They're getting a college football game, and Mother Nature's providing quite a show as well. You hear the crowd ooing and awing from time to time because of the lightning bolts. Wheelahan remains at quarterback. Number five for the Pacific Tigers. He's to throw on first down. Good arm. Shoots it out to the left side. Julian, the wide receiver, picks up the pass. Claudius Wright gets the tackle. Claudius Wright is playing because uh, Mike Skurlock uh, banged up a little bit this week. Back problems. Wheelahan, a transfer out of Oregon State, shows he's got a good release and an excellent arm. 5-18, clock running, first half. 10-3, Arizona over the Pacific Tigers. Willahan to throw. Out to the flat, good pickup that time. Ball was caught by Darrell Rogers, the fullback. And again, he had five receptions last week against Texas Tech. And a, right, and a great call, and that's that Stanford play. They like to run that. But again, what they're trying to do is spread Arizona, get away from that uh, great front four from Arizona. Not a bad way to play. The trouble is, sometime down the road, you're probably going to have to run the football over the middle. A 13-yard pickup, first down at the 46-yard line. Arizona really pressing this time, right up on the receivers. Trying to make him throw in a hurry. With motion, wheel ahead. They're going to dump it. He had a great deal of pressure from Jimmy Hopkins that time. They're saying the pass was intended for Howard Blackwell, although Howard was considerably removed from the bounce of that particular pass. Yeah, Howard Blackwell's probably their best rusher. He's a transfer out of Oregon, was a highly touted uh, freshman candidate for Oregon's football team. Went to junior college, Los Angeles Valley, and then uh, returned to Pacific. Sophomore Peter Becker now moves into the Arizona line. Wheelahan, quick out. Pass received by Julian. So Trent Julian, the brother of former Wildcat Barry Julian, with another catch. Very quickly, he gets this ball out. He's got the same number that Barry had. I don't know if Barry's watching this or, or where he is exactly. I haven't seen him for a while. But Barry, his brother here, plays uh, kind of a wide receiver. Barry was a tight end for Arizona when they didn't throw the football very much to their tight end. Overload to the left. Wheel ahead. Forced down to the clock. Completes the pass. Enough for the first down. Impressive drive. Greg Weston, the freshman, with the reception. Lots of people. There they are, the overload. Left side. When especially if you're in a zone, they get three people quickly into a zone where maybe there's only two defenders, and that's what happened right there. You got to make a choice of who you're going to take. Arizona, strong zone team, primarily. But, uh, they have to play man if they continue to hurt them. Ball at the 34-yard line. Wheelahan. What a fine catch that time by fullback Daryl Rogers. Grant Boyer was all over him, and Wheelahan delivered a bullet, and somehow he hung on with his fingertips. Yeah. Great pass, but you couldn't ask for any better defense. Linebacker picking that back, coming out of the backfield, up quickly, just what you're supposed to do. Probably couldn't complete that pass again in 100 years. 
right at the knees, just away from the defender. For all of that, it was worth just two yards. Second down and eight at the 32. Wheelahan will stay in the pocket this time. Dumps it across the middle again. And once again, it's Rodgers out of the backfield, number 25. He's a senior, six foot, 225 pounder. Well, that's one of the changes that Coach Shelton made. Rodgers was their inside linebacker last year. He was an All-American uh, fullback, small college fullback, and so he put him back to fullback when they were decided they were going to run the football. First time out. He's become a great pass receiver. All right, the Wildcats lead by a bunch rushing-wise. However, Pacific is leading the air war tonight, 101 to 9 yards. And as Coach, you pointed out a couple of times, as the Wildcats have called a timeout. We're going to stay right here. The uh, Wildcats have not thrown a pass for a while now. Oh, they haven't. I think they've run 13 straight plays without a pass. On the other side, the football Pacific is probably throwing 13 straight times without a run. But the young man who just caught that pass, interesting story, he started his football career at St. Mary's College up in the Bay Area as a Division II All-American fullback. <laughs> Came to Pacific where they threw the football, run and shoot, and uh, they made him a linebacker, very tough, rugged linebacker. And now this year he's been converted back to a fullback, but using the fullback to throw to. Well, so far it's not a bad trip into the desert for Chuck Shelton. A charge timeout was to Arizona. And nine last year. Eight. Well, his career is 69-107. He's really been some tough programs. But he's been a been more of a turnaround guy. Right. He's been at Drake where he was 40 and 59. Then he went to Utah State, had some good years, six years there. 26 and 39. He was the big West coach of the year. So he's been in this league. He knows the programs. All That's right. one of the reasons they hired him at Pacific. From the 15-yard line, first down. The draw play. Straight ahead, lots of room for tailback Howard Blackwell, the JC transfer. Against Texas Tech last week, he had 14 carries for 67 yards, the only bright spot in Lubbock, Texas last week for Pacific. Sean Harris, number 49, finally made the stop. A great example of using the passing game to set up the running game. They got more yardage there than they might get the whole ball game. They had one rushing yard up until that particular play. Great draw play. Excellent position for Pacific. Second and one on the six. Out of motion. Drive straight ahead. Maybe a yard. Daryl Rogers carrying that time instead of receiving. Sean Harris and Chuck Osborne combined to make the stop. And that'll bring up a first and goal for Pacific. They spot the ball at the four-yard line. So the Wildcats perilously close already tonight to giving up the touchdown, their first of the season. Have their backs to the wall again. The Pacific now leads in first downs, as you just saw. Dick Tomey did not feel the Wildcats played hard enough last week. I don't know what's going through the mind right now. the four-yard line. Halfback pass. Nearly intercepted. Howard Blackwell delivered the ball. He was looking for You got it. Daryl Rogers. Now, Arizona really re reacted well to that. Uh, I'm not sure that on the film, but maybe uh, films pre previously they've seen it. If you saw the play today on TV where Alabama, oh, the ball was there. Had a chance to sure catch was. it. Alabama ran that play for about 85 yards for a touchdown to their great receiver, Palmer. Well, this drive, the longest drive for either team this season. 10 plays, 63 yards long. The give in the middle. Blackwell still on his feet and then dumped. Howard tried to make the spin move from Chuck Osborne, then he got leveled by Tony Bowie. So Tony, who will likely roam center field for Jerry Kindle come the spring of 1994, played well, pretty much center field here tonight. Came up and made the stop. Well, they had to run that drop play earlier and, and made a great gain out of it, so Arizona defense had adjusted a little bit 
Probably looking for it. All right, a moment ago, Dick Tomey called timeout. Now the Tigers want to take some time to review what they can do as another clap of thunder is heard here in Tucson tonight. A minute and 23 seconds remain in the first half. The score, Arizona 10, Pacific 3. And the Wildcats trying to keep, well, pretty much their... They're a great uh, streak of uh, not allowing touchdowns in the first half of football games, and certainly that the way the season started this year. Arizona did not allow Texas El Paso into the end zone last week. They did allow a couple of field goals. So Craig Wheelahan. Only seven, seven for ten mm -hmm. now as he's coming to the ball game. He was four for nine last week against Texas Tech. Hannigan was 11 for 17 with their 26 passes. They probably got 26 right now here in the first half. With their 27. They rushed the ball 10 times. All right, a little character builder for the Wildcats and their fans. Third down, goal to goal, four yard line. Incomplete. Blackwell out of the backfield. Could not hang on. So the field goal unit comes on to the field. Tell you what, Craig Wheelahan did a pretty good job that series, though. Yeah. Catchable ball and uh, probably threw it where you want to throw it along that goal line, down around the knees so those defenders can't come up from behind you or the side and get to it. But again, he throws a hard pass, a lot of velocity. Jeff Russell, the safety, and sometimes place kicker, already has three points tonight. Make it six. Well, the Wildcats do not allow the touchdown. However, they allow another field goal. And the Tigers, rallying around tonight, are within four of Arizona with a minute and 15 to go in the first half. And that is ooing and awing some of the 42,000 on hand tonight. And it's got to make the Tigers feel good. They were down 34-7 at halftime last week against Texas Tech. So again, Arizona has given up four field goals so far this season. No touchdowns. Some interesting scores from the Pac-10 today. California over San Diego State, 45-25. The Golden Bears, 2-0 all of a sudden. Off to a great start. Oregon had their hands filled with Montana. They beat them 35-30. And Penn State stopped a Southern California two-point conversion for a 21-20 win. And Southern Cal's getting better. They uh, really looked out of it in that ball game early, but uh, by the time they play Arizona in three weeks, uh, they'll probably have some of the kinks out. You know, strong passing game. They're kind of a little opposite of Arizona. Not very good at the running game for USC. They need to find some way to run the football to be successful in the league. Jason Scouten, who also punts for Pacific, nails the ball through the end zone. Tigers with a pretty good scoring drive. 13 plays, 63 yards, and 4 minutes and 42 seconds off the clock. The Wildcats will have a first and 10 from their own 20. A minute and 15 seconds to go in the first half. We haven't seen the throw from Dan White for a while. You got a minute 15 in the half. What are you expecting? Well, the way they've been playing, I would su uh, suspect they will run the football again. Well, that'll be interesting. White going to throw on first down. In the pocket, he stays. Fires across the middle to Dickey. He gets enough for the first down. The ball popped loose, but he was already down, say the referees. The ball at the 32-yard line, first down. Clock stops for the move of the chain. A little two-minute offense for Arizona to see if they can um, be aggressive and maybe move the football down the scoring territory. There's an official timeout. One of the Tigers are shaken up. Now they'll set the line, count how many players are on the field, and White says, let's get going. And that was Owen Taylor, their nose guard, doing a pretty good job so far in this ballgame. Straight back. Again, Terry Vaughn is ruled down when he caught the ball, but that's enough for another first down. 
A good Gary comeback. Sacker. Arizona 13 plays without a pass, and now deep in their own territory, two consecutive throws, completions. Split back formation, showing pass. White has the ball nearly pulled from him as he went back to pass. Now, the Miners got to him in that position a couple of times last week. Almost an identical play where the uh, Miners were able to turn up a fumble. Jason Evans struck the right arm of Dan White. Stops the clock with 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Ball at the 45-yard line, second and 10. The give is to Lovett, off right side. He's got some room, enough for a first down. Good thing that'll stop the clock while the chains are moved. And Arizona into Tiger territory. The ball spotted at the 40-yard line. Clock begins to run. 40 seconds remain in the half. White going to throw. Steps up, dumps it. Love it. Straight ahead after the catch. Not quite enough for the first down. And the Wildcats are going to have to call a timeout. Well, they've got two. Uh, they've got one left now, so they're in pretty good shape. Arizona with 28 seconds to go. They got a timeout, so they probably got a chance to run uh, another uh, one or two plays. Depends whether they're going to pass or run it. Well, for Dick Tomey, this is the most encouraging drive so far of the night, but wouldn't you know it, it comes with a two-minute package. And a little mix. You know, really, Arizona has either run the football or they've either passed it. You know, they really haven't mixed it much. On this drive, they've mixed it. They started out with a couple passes and then uh, uh, run, the, run the sweep and then a, and then a uh, screen pass to the fullback, and so they've mixed it a little bit better. And I think that's really what they have to do. They get to the point where they can complement their passing and they're running. But I'm sure they're trying to accomplish some things, too, uh, with that particular game plan they have. A light rain begins to fall inside Arizona Stadium. But this is a great chance to use the clock. Every day in practice, the last part of practice, uh, they run against the clock for either uh, two or three minutes to see if they can get a field goal opportunity or score. Well, I'm not sure about the lay. Something on the field. Toss it off to the sideline. Looks something metallic. But it is now off the field. The Wildcats with 28 seconds ready to go again. Wide at quarterbacks. There's the look at Arizona Stadium on September 11. Gary Taylor looking to go outside. Still on his feet. Needs to get to the sideline. Doesn't get there. However, it's enough for the first down that stops the clock again. 20 seconds remain in the first half. And I'm sure the Wildcats would like to sniff seven points as opposed to having Steve McLaughlin now with the rain on the field come out and try to attempt something. In the, uh, they at least the got another 40. play, David, before they, and they got a timeout, so they can stop the clock. First down would stop it, but they can stop it with a play. White to throw in a crowd. The ball is knocked out of bounds. Nearly intercepted. The pass was intended for Richard Dice. That'll stop the clock for sure with 13 seconds. Two, maybe three plays, depending on the outcome of each play. Well, they really need to throw it, uh, and probably you're getting to the point where you almost have to throw it deep or into the end zone. It would be a 53-yard field goal from the point they're at now. White's going to throw, stays in the pocket, goes outside, gets it to Dickey. However, Dickey is brought down immediately at just about the, well, they mark him for a gain of about two. Arizona will need to use their timeout here to get the kicking team on the field. And the Wildcats indeed call the timeout. Dwayne Aquina meets Dan White. Dick Tome is going to see about his place kicker, Steve McLaughlin. McLaughlin, two of three so far this year. On field goals, he had his miss tonight. Missed one from 21, hit one of 21 last week. Four seconds remain in the first half. Well, Steve was 11 for 20 last year. Exciting year for him. An opportunity to really be 11, 12, probably 13 of those. Uh, he just missed a couple by six to eight inches, 55%. You'd like to be 
You're over 60% with your field goal kicking, especially inside the 35-yard line. This is probably going to be a little longer than that. You'd like to be 100%. He's well, got he'll plenty of leg for this distance, so that's no problem. He'll be kicking out of the hold of number 14, Ryan Hessen, the redshirt freshman out of Saguaro High School here in Tucson. And the Tigers are going to call yet another timeout. They want McLaughlin to think about it, so Steve has time to visit with friends. <laughs> well, the whole Arizona package, uh, interesting, is a Saguaro High School package. The holder the kicker and the punter for Arizona uh, this particular year. So I'm Coach Howard uh, Brighty, who uh, survived a tie with Tucson High Friday night. And I'm sure he's watching the ball game or here and uh, has great pride in these three young men from Saguaro. 4 seconds remain. We'll have statistical data for you at halftime, so stick around. McLaughlin's long field goal, his career high is 50 yards last year. The year before, he hit a 38-yarder. So he's well within his range. 21 against UTEP last week. Now this will be, they're going to call it a 41-yard attempt. Three more points for Steve McLaughlin as the half expires. Arizona scores. That makes our halftime score 13 to 6. As advertised, we'll have some statistical data for you at halftime. We'll be back to Arizona Stadium following these important messages. Wildcat Football is brought to you by your Southern Arizona Dodge dealers. The new Dodge. We're changing everything. By Farmers Insurance. Call your local agent of the Farmers Insurance Group for your family's insurance needs. And by Allied Signals Autolite Spark Plugs. Guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. Back at Arizona Stadium, it's halftime on a most unusual September 11th. We've had a downpour before the start of the ball game. There is a downpour in progress right now at the stadium at halftime. The band is probably the most valiant thing in the stadium tonight. They've been out there for both of the downpours, and it is a weird night here. The Wildcats leading 13 to 6. Well, they're really kind of struggling. It's been Arizona's rushing game, much improved over last week against the Pacific passing game. Very impressive. I suppose a highlight for Arizona, Gary Taylor with 86 yards in the first half, and then the block kick, but they weren't able to capitalize on that. So it's been a game of uh, just kind of spurts and sputters, and uh, neither team has really been able to sustain a, a dominance in this first half. All right, there's no doubt there's some disappointment in Arizona's locker room right now. Coach, very quickly, Pacific up, Arizona down. What is the bigger factor? No, I think both teams are playing hard. I think uh, Arizona missed on that first opportunity to score, gave Pacific a chance to get back in the ball game. When you do that with somebody who's a very uh, definite underdog, that, that gets your motor running and it keeps you keeps you going. I suppose the one stat, as you look at it, Arizona two for seven in third down conversions, and that's an area they were really disappointing last year. Last week they were very good, 10 out of 16, 60%. You'd like to be up in that area, or at least at 40%. So that's really hurt them. They haven't been able to sustain any drives, although the last last three minutes or two minutes with that 41-yard uh, field goal with uh, McLaughlin. A little impressive. Some passing, some running. They looked a little better in that last two minutes. All right. The Wildcats have had some ups tonight. We'll take a look at some of our highlights. It started, Arizona had a block punt in the first half. Richard Dice, the wide receiver, got in, made the punt. There was an ensuing melee as the ball finally came down to Akil Jackson. He rumbled down, but ironically, the Wildcats inside the five could not come away with a score. However, a little while later, Arizona's defense having another good night. Set up an Arizona touchdown. Billy Johnson on the run. And Arizona... 3-0. Passes by the reserve quarterback, Craig Wheelahan set up some nice drives. They threw quite a bit to the back out of the backfield. Daryl Rogers, they scored a couple of field goals tonight. And as the coach mentioned just a moment ago, probably the most impressive drive of the night for the Wildcats. 
of the two-minute drill from their own 20, and uh, they finally got the 40-yard field goal from McLaughlin, 41 to be exact, and that makes our score 13 to 6. Now, as far as the stats are concerned, Jack Furrier's stat board. The Tigers have won the passing game tonight, to be sure, and the Wildcats on the ground. Well, yeah, they were very impressive on that last drive. They resulted only in a field goal for them, but uh, very impressive, especially uh, Wilhelm. He took over for Hedigan here in the second quarter. He's been very, very impressive. Arizona with 210 yards at halftime. You'd like to have about 400 yards total offense in the ball game. Arizona's right on track, but still the ball game's much tighter than you would think it would be with that kind of yardage. No doubt, Coach, the Wildcats are disappointed. Again, lots of penalties five times. It's cost them 40 yards and at least three points for Pacific. All right, we'll be back at a rainy night in Tucson. Our second half comes your way right after these messages. Cab Football is brought to you by your Southern Arizona Dodge dealers. The new Dodge. We're changing everything. By Bank of America. As long as Americans believe there's nothing they can't do, we'll keep helping them do it. Banking on America. Bank of America. And by the Arizona Daily Star. Get all the news, sports, entertainment, and business information you need from Southern Arizona's largest news-gathering organization, the Arizona Daily Star. At soggy Arizona Stadium, the Wildcats out in front 13 to 6. Before we kick off to start the second, let's take a look at the Pac-10 scores. California 2-0 now over San Diego State 45-25. Stanford just did beat the Spartans of San Jose State by three. Montana State fell to Washington State in a big way. And uh, Montana not up to the task with Oregon. Some top 20 action. The Pac-10 did not fare so well. They lost a couple of games today. Fresno State out in front of Oregon State. Oregon State uh, defeated Fresno State for their only win last season. And then Florida State, you see, over Clemson, 57 nothing. Bobby Bowden's got him going. Notre Dame at Michigan. They won in front of 104,000 in Ann Arbor. Notre Dame 27, Michigan 23. Alabama roll tide roll over Vanderbilt, 17-6. And A&M, a big loss, an upset. Oklahoma 44, Texas A&M 14. You read correctly. And they don't have the Missouri-Illinois game on there. Missouri beat Illinois 31-3 to in Missouri. Arizona's next opponent next week. Illinois looking for an offense. Pretty good defensive unit. Missouri picked to finish sixth in the pick eight, so that's not a very impressive showing by the Illini. Picked to finish fourth in the Big Ten. All right, Steve McLaughlin belts it into the neighborhood of Stanley Green. He's going to try to return it again on a slick field against the seam out to the 30-yard line. Well, the Tigers are doing a lot of things correctly tonight. Amongst them, their special teams out to the 30-yard line to start the second half. Well, you know, they had a great run return at the Texas Tech last week, but it was nullified by a penalty, so uh, things just backfired on them. Who's the last guy you want to have make a tackle on your kickoff team? <laughs> Probably the kicker. He just did. <laughs> McLaughlin with the stop. All right. I'll give you something to brag about the rest of the year. All right, the starting quarterback, the southpaw, Dave Hennigan, will start the second half for the Tigers. They trail the Wildcats by seven to start the second half. He's going to throw on first down, gets it out, dropped on the far side by Trent Julian. Good coverage that time, though, causing the drop. Got a good one-on-one, -on -one, and he really did a good job of uh, sticking his body right into Jay Phillips. He had a chance to catch that. Hennigan uh, played well early in the ballgame. Uh, similar kind of pass plays. And uh, Wheelhand came in later, and he ran a little different kind of a pass pattern, but he was also effective. All right, they've got that load him up to the left side again. Hennigan in trouble is going to try to rush out of it, and it won't work. Dropped by Rob Waldrop. Well, senior out of Horizon High School in Phoenix. Four-yard loss on the play. Coach, we're going to say earlier on there was a there is a uh, connection between Dave Hennigan, who's going to meet Mr. Waldrop. Thank you. Uh, actually, Hennigan's father played football at Northern Illinois, and his coach at Northern Illinois was a fellow by the name of Dick Tomey. So Dick coached the dad. He's into the second generation, coaching against the son. All right, third and 14, ball at the 26-yard line. Hennigan to throw. Lots of time. Gets the back out of the backfield once again. And it's Daryl Rogers. What a night he's having receiving the football out of his fullback position. 
Well, this is a scouting report on the Pacific coming into this ball game. They don't throw to their wide receivers much. Their backs got 13 throws last week. Out of the 15 they completed. But this week they mix it up a little bit better. But uh, every once in a while we see Rodgers come out of that backfield and he's given them some big, big gains. All right, on first down, the draw play. This is Howard Blackwell. He's finally run out of bounds by Brant Boyer and Deshaun Harris. Mark a pickup of maybe two yards. They're going to mark it down as a one-yard gain. Second down and nine. Ball now at the 46-yard line of the Wildcats. And you know at halftime, Coach, no doubt about it, inside the locker room, Chuck Shelton told this team, you can win this game. Well, they've got to feel better about themselves uh, after last week. Big blitz, big package, and big loss. Sean Harris. Well, Arizona in their blitz package. They got an inside linebacker blitz. They got a safety blitz. Last week, we saw Harris almost react automatically. He was going with the blitz as uh, UTEP went in motion with their flanker or slot back. I think in this ball game, probably a little bit different, but in a throwing situation, uh, we'll see him coming a little bit. Very great speed, you know, with that 6'2 or 3 inch body he's got. All right, Hennigan to throw out of the backfield. The pass was up top. However, still caught by Rodgers, and he's still on his feet, finally knocked out of bounds. Well, he's some receiver. Tony Bowie finally applied the hit. Well, as we indicated, he's a fullback, and really, they almost had a touchdown here just before the half. Uh, that's the only pass he really hasn't caught. As you indicated, very, very good hands. He's been coming across the middle, tough area to catch passes, and uh, on that flare pass right there, on the move, tough pass to catch. Jason Scouting into punt, gets it away to his 42. Drives it down for Vaughn, who wants the fair catch at the nine yard line. So the Wildcats will start within their own 10 yard line. One of the stories of tonight's game in a lot of ways has been the weather. We had a deluge at halftime that sent many of the 42,000 home. And now with 13 minutes and three seconds remaining, in the third quarter, the winds are kicking up. Old glory at the north end of the stadium is really flying. And right now, the Wildcats have the wind at their back. So Arizona will take possession of the ball after the 38-yard punt. It'll be first down and 10 at Arizona's nine-yard line. Patterson and Taylor are the backfield for Arizona. Behind White, the give is to Taylor. Off tackle, right side, picks up a couple. Taylor was a workhorse in the first half, 86 yards rushing. A great chance to get his first 100 rushing yard game for Arizona. As Arizona finished the half with two minutes to go, they made an impressive drive almost from this same distance, moving down the field to get themselves a field goal. And that was probably the most impressive drive of the half where they mixed some passing and some running. Early in the ball game, they either passed the ball four or five downs in a row or either ran it. In one case, 13 downs in a row. All right, after the three yard pickup, the pitch is to Taylor. Trying to turn the corner, picks up a couple of more yards. Eric Stavola, inside linebacker, comes over to make the stop. Billy Johnson suffered a thigh bruise in the first half. Now, they're expecting him to play sometime in the second half. He's not been on the field yet. But now the story of Arizona's injuries. You know, you recall a couple of years ago, all of a sudden, Stamer's out, Levy was out, Antoine Carter's out. Billy Johnson takes a hit to the thigh. What's next? Mike Skirter's out. Skirlock's yes. out. Hulu Camille is out. Crucial. Here's where Arizona has not been very good in this ball game. Third and short yardage. This is Lovett on the outside. Gets some good blocks. He's got the first down. Out across the 25-yard line. Down to the 26 by Darius Cunnigan. Arizona's third conversion. Third down. They were two for seven in the first half. Last week, 10 for 16 in the ball game. You'd like to be at least 40%, maybe 42 is a, is a goal most teams set. They had some trouble across the way. The, the yard markers got tangled up. Now they've corrected that problem. 
Ryan Hessen, you saw number 14 down there. That's uh, Brady Batten, number 10, the reserve quarterback. But Hessen sends in a lot of signals. He's quite the student of the game. And Arizona not being very studious now. Who jumped? It looks like it was Robert Lewis, Lewis the tight end on the left side. They're going to have to go back into class and rethink that one after a five-yard loss for the penalty. You know, Lamont Lovett got that first down for Arizona. He had 39 yards in the first half. This is probably his best uh, running effort in, say, the last uh, year and a half for the last last year and including the second ball game this year. Reliable back. Senior. Experienced. And Patterson in the backfield for Arizona I formation after the five-yard loss. The give is to play action back to Levin. And he dropped it. Good play action. He'd, I'd love it taking the football. Then he was the receiver. He'd like to uh, have that one over again. Now, what Arizona has really is two fullbacks. Lamont Lovett has been playing fullback, but now he's gone to tailback to fill in for Levy and Carter. And uh, and we're not sure about Taylor now being uh, out of the ball game. And Billy Johnson's out. And now we see Jason Patterson. He's wears number 46. He's a junior college transfer out of Santa Monica City. 5'11", and a good old-fashioned 232-pound bowling ball. Here's the give up the middle to Lovett. Gets almost to the original line of scrimmage before Grant Carter brings him down. Patterson looks like a fullback. And that's what really Arizona went out to do this past year is to recruit a couple fullbacks uh, with the idea of getting them some better blocking as they go to this running formation, either split backs or high formation. Big third down for Arizona. Well, they passed well last series to conclude the first half. We'll see what they do now. Third down, 11 at the 25-yard line. Straight drop back for White. Delivers. Terry Vaughn, just enough for the first down. Smart route by Terry Vaughn. Does a little button hook. Pacific just dropped in the zone. They only went with four. Vaughn finds a seam, pulls up short right between the uh, up defensive player and that cornerback. He had him pushed back, just enough room to get the ball in there. And uh, White throws a throws a ball with some velocity on it. All right, Patterson and Taylor behind White on the new first down. Ball at the 38-yard line. Uh, loose and it's recovered by Gary Taylor. Lots of work to be done. Flair's only gets into the meat of their schedule now with Illinois. And then they're back up at uh, Oregon State, and then it's USC here. Now, I think the defense that they play is going to give them a chance to for the offense to develop, maybe even a couple more ball games. So maybe we may see a lot of ball games like this, teams that are good teams and teams that are not so good that can still play Arizona probably fairly close. White gives to Taylor, makes a nice move, cuts back inside. Finally, he's cut down at the 42-yard line. Now, Gary Taylor will long remember his first start as a Wildcat. He'll be in triple figures at the conclusion of tonight. Lamont Lovett with another good block, freeing his teammate. Well, that should put him over the 100-yard mark right there. He had 86 at halftime. Watch number 34. That's Lamont. Good crab block. And a good block. Taylor with a good move. All right. First and 10. Ball at the 42-yard line. 8.43 to go third quarter. Taylor, again, flag comes down. This is a lot like that drive that Arizona had just before halftime. They've made some good passing when they've needed it. They've been able to convert third down conversions, two in a row. All right, the Wildcats holding, apparently. That'll erase the game by Taylor. Take the Wildcats back. Holding on the offense. First down. All right, it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It's first down. They're going to mark the ball at the 48-yard line. 
of Pacific. There you see Gary Taylor in his first start, 112 yards. So he's putting his stamp on this game. His first as a starter, although he played well last week against UTEP. Leading ground gainer, so uh, I'm sure he's going to end up being the leading ground gainer in this ball game with Johnson hurt now. He, that's probably the only back that could catch him. First and 16. White fires Devon. Devon stays on his feet. Spins inside the 40-yard line, down at the 39. That's where Terry Vaughn is uh, very good as a receiver, coming back to the football. When you're coming back to meet the ball or a curl, and that ball's coming at you, it's a little tough pass to catch because the momentum you have going into that ball coming at a pretty good speed. Got to have good hands to hang on to it. Jamie Anderson made the stop. White, across the middle to Dickey. Good for the first down, down to the 30-yard line. Two consecutive series in which the Wildcats have thrown the ball well. They did so at the end of the first half, and now they come out in the first series of the second half. That's uh, at least four or five completions, no incompletions in this series. Nice quick slant right across the middle. Dickey at six, two or three. And uh, White at 6'5", two big, high, tall targets. Gary Taylor, he's got some room. Finally bashed down at the 16-yard line. Dimitri Gazellis made the stop. He's 5'10", 180 pounds. Taylor on the collision, 5'11", 191 pounds. Gazellis, one of the Tigers in the backfield. All of the defensive backfield for Pacific returns from last year, as the coach pointed out in the first half. In fact, they're all three-year starters, so you couldn't get much more experience. The fact that they have a returnee who was hurt uh, also classifies as a three-year starter. I don't know how many you get those, how you can get that many backs that uh, could qualify for that category. Play action. White fires across the middle. Dickey again. He fell down, but he fell down at the three-yard line. First down and goal for the Wildcats. Coach, he was one for nine at one point. I believe he's back to 50% passing, so Dan White is heated up here. Well, you're probably right. He was five for 11 at uh, halftime, just under 50%. Uh, for a goal, you'd like to be at 60 or above, but he's been 100% so far in this second half. Dickey with five catches tonight. 10 yards per catch is the average. Patterson and Taylor in the backfield. The give to Taylor, straight through the middle, and did he make it? And they're gonna mark him down about, <laughs> about a football short. Grant Carter and Dimitri Gazelis made the stop for the Tigers. Five minutes, 44 seconds remain third quarter. The Wildcats out in front of Pacific, 13 to six on a rainy night in Tucson. Well, it's been pretty much Dickey and Vaughn, uh, Arizona's pass receivers. Dickey's, uh, they both had four last week. Dickey had three in the first half. Now he's had two here in the second half. Big package in, lots of tight ends. Again, Taylor again. And he runs into a Tiger to wall. Loses it. Almost a yard. Well, Taylor's not an exceptionally big back. He's six feet and about 200 pounds, but he's a lot bigger than he was last year. Uh, some people have indicated he's gained about 30 pounds over last year, so he's really put some weight on. Even C. Taylor has gained some weight. Tigers do their job. Good hit as they come across the line. Well, they won the battle. On the line of scrimmage on that play, now it's Cedar Arizona does third and goal from the one yard line. Out of the eye, two tight ends. Give us to Lovett. He's knocked down short. Well, fourth down and goal. And Tommy's going to send the field to goal unit on the team, onto the field rather.
Well, with the kind of lead you got and the kind of game you're having, again, this is the second opportunity now Arizona has uh, had where they've not been able to put the ball into the end zone from very short yardage. So uh, next week, that short yardage offense gets a lot of work. And the kick is good. That was not Steve McLaughlin, by the way. It was John Prussian, reserve place kicker. All right, he gets three points. The Arizona gets three more, 16-6 at Arizona Stadium. Arizona Stadium, Arizona ahead, 16-6, their largest lead of the night. Well, that's Arizona's starting kicker, Steve McLaughlin. However, he did not just convert the field goal. That was done by John Presum. And Arizona has a 10-point lead. Well, we don't have a word. We don't know McLaughlin is hurt. Well, John's going to stay in the ball game and kick it off also. So maybe there is an injury possibility there. Or maybe just giving him some experience. Impressive drive by Arizona. I suppose the negative would be that uh, they weren't able to finish it off. Preston's kick comes down to 16, taken by Pacific, and it'll be killed at about the 28-yard line. Here you see John. Sophomore here out of Tucson. Most outstanding kicker honors at the 92 Ben Agajanian Kicking Camp out in California. Born in Phoenix and comes from South Point Catholic High School. No word on McLaughlin. All right. Hennigan remains in the game, fires it outside to his fullback, Daryl Rogers. Wildcat defenders converge. The ball is down at the 30-yard line. Well, Arizona's covered that flare uh, pass by the halfback a little better in this half. Rodgers hurt him in the first half on that play. Nine minutes on the scoring drive for the Wildcats. They went 90 yards in nine minutes, 17 plays. They're in it with Prayson's 18-yard field goal. No incompletion. That was a great drive. You know, the bad thing was that they weren't able to finish it off. They go outside again. Good move on the outside. Good pickup by Howard Blackwell. Tony Bowie finally knocked him out of bounds. You know, in this day and age of college football or any kind of football, you never see a team run a play and then come right back and run it again. Whether it's successful or not, very seldom do you see uh, a football game where a team will run the same play two or three times in a row. Why is that? I don't know. you got to be diversified, I guess. All right. Misdirection. Give is again to Blackwell. The Wildcats took advantage of it. Jim Hoffman, along with Brant Boyer, they teamed to make the stop. Clock runs three minutes and one second in the third quarter. Now Pacific's been impressive with their passing game, but you can see you just have to have some kind of running game to complement your passing. You just can't play the complete game throwing the football all the time. And again, in the pocket this time, forced out. And well overthrows Rodgers. And a flag, and the Wildcats may have hit somebody too late. Teddy Bruschi delivered a blow to Hennigan, and we'll see if that's going to cost Arizona 15 yards. I thought maybe that was uh, Hopkins, number 82. Well, let's hear from... Roughing the quarterback, 15 yards, first down. Well, sure enough, 15 yards, and with the penalty, let's take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. All right, with the penalty against the Wildcats, the Tigers are inside Arizona territory. Ball down at the 48-yard line. 67 yards. Arizona has given the Tigers tonight. Well, Tech had 16 penalties in the ballgame last week. Hennigan throws it out. Blackwell was the intended receiver. Well, I'm not so sure that was not a, a lateral. 
Well, it was not thrown forward, that's for sure. We happened to be right on line that time, and that, that was a lateral pass to Howard Blackwell. If it was a lateral, that's a live ball. Arizona could have recovered that. Yeah, let's take a second look and see if we can determine by our camera position. Okay, Blackwell is the intended receiver. All right, uh, that is a lateral pass. That ball is live. Who picked it up? Brandon Sanders came in, alertly picked it up. They whistled it dead. Well, that happens. Let's see what ruling, if any, there'll be on it. If Arizona doesn't get the ball back, they must realize, of course, they made the error and not give Arizona at least the point of where the fumble would have been recovered to the ball blown dead. Instead, it's second down and 10. So the Tigers dodge a bullet. They give it to Rogers. The Wildcats are not happy. They'll mark it down for a loss of one. Well, there was Brandon Sanders. He's a strong safety, and there was uh, Tony Bowie. He's a free safety. They were really up into that backfield quickly. Third down and 11. Ball back to the 49-yard line now. Even with Pacific passing as much as they are, the Arizona DBs are uh, really up on that line of scrimmage. There's Bowie. He's only about 10 yards back. Hennigan's going to try to swing it again. Pass is completed to Blackwell, but he's nailed. At the 45-yard line. That means the punt team has come onto the field. Sean Harris with the stop. Minute 37 to go. Now clock begins to run. Terry Vaughn is going to go back to receive the punt for the Wildcats. And Jason Scouten will be the punter for Pacific. Scouten knocks it at the 46-yard line. Another fair catch called for by Vaughn. Ball drops to the floor, takes an Arizona bounce, and let's see where they down it. Right at the 10-yard line. Okay, the Wildcats will take over with a minute 15 to go. Remaining in the third quarter, Arizona by 10. Arizona went 90 yards to get a field goal a few moments ago. Now they're back at their 10-yard line again. So we'll see how they fare from the south end moving north. Minute 15 to go in the third quarter. Arizona ahead 16 to 6 over the University of Pacific Tigers. The first play to give us to love it. And he is seated at the 10 yard line again. Manny out number 50 for Arizona, who was the starting center last year until he got hurt. And uh, Hisham Almashtuk took over. Now he's getting some playing time as a left guard because you remember Arizona. That Wildcat fans should not miss inside Wildcat football, sponsored by the UA Extended University, featuring Coach Dick Tomey and his talented coaching staff. Here's your chance to learn the secrets of offense and defense and talk with the coaches about their strategy for getting to the Rose Bowl. Enjoy four entertaining Thursday evening classes starting October 7th at McHale Center. Parking is free and convenient. Call 624-U of A for details. All right, 15 to go. The Wildcats with third and six to go. White, straight back, plenty of time. Across the middle he goes, the pass is caught. Troy Dickey, who is emerging as one of the two favorite pass receivers for Dan White. Seems like Terry Vaughn and Troy Dickey are really stepping forward. After three quarters, the Wildcats 150 yards through the air. Excuse me, the Tigers with 150, the Wildcats with 105. A look at the rushing yardage, Coach. Minus four. El Paso didn't go anywhere on the ground. No, neither are the Tigers. Impressive. Minus eight last week. Minus four this week. So the defense shows that uh, I think ahead of where it was last year. Richard Dice at the lower edge of the screen. White flustered. Tosses it out to Taylor. Perhaps just as well the ball was overthrown. There were a lot of white jerseys in the vicinity. Well, Arizona had set up a screen, but the Pacific hadn't rushed well enough to make the screen uh, effective. He had a screen set to either side. Second and 10, the ball out to the 26-yard line. The Wildcats went 90 yards to pick up a field goal to start the second half. Took them nine minutes to do it. They started this drive at their own 10-yard line after their defense held and caused a Pacific punch. White. And 
they took a tad bit too much time. Well, you come up to the line. You're just now coming into Division I football, and the coaching staff gives you a lot of things to check at the line of scrimmage, and then you've got to think about it, you've got to react, and you've got to call the audible. And that's got to be a concern to Dick Tomey. And the general trend or philosophy of football today is uh, you may be heavy five or three or four sets, maybe more than that, and they call the set from the sideline, and then when you get to the line of scrimmage, the quarterback, in a lot of cases, has a responsibility to call some play that will fit that particular formation. And sometimes the defense on the other end, they're trying to disguise their situation, so they move people around and make it a little difficult for that quarterback. Second and 15, White's going to throw. Stays in the pocket, and now the ball's batted away from him, and it's recovered by the Tigers. Dan brings the ball down to his hip. The Miners got to it last week, and this is the second time tonight the Tigers have been able to get to the football. Almost identical. Uh, Pacific hasn't really, uh, I suppose maybe they have a couple sacks, really put much pressure. They stayed pretty much in their zone, and they've rushed those four down linemen. Uh, White, throughout the ball game, has had uh, a lot of time to throw. I'm not sure he's going to get that much time as the season goes along. All right, the Tigers are going to continue their quarterly exchange of quarterbacks. Craig Wheelahan back into the ball game to call signals for the Tigers. On first down, swings the pass. Out to his fullback, Rodgers. That's a live ball once again. And the Wildcats, are they going to roll it in or out of bounds? I think that was a forward pass. I don't think uh, that was as close as the other one. Well, the Wildcats aren't at all happy about the call. Let's see if we can pick it up again. been a point of contention now on two plays whether or not Dave Hennigan threw the ball or Craig Whelan. Now folks, even though the quarterback throws it overhand, that's not the issue. It's whether or not the ball is traveling toward the line of scrimmage and it is not. It is going backwards. That is a lateral. That ball is live. We're back to live now. Second down and 10 at the 14 yard line. Whelan fires complete. His favorite receiver, that's Rodgers. And he takes quite a pop. And the Wildcats felt they picked up the football again, but that's not the case. Now the official called it dead right there on the one-yard line. Now he's going to be a bit cranky tonight. There's no doubt about it. The Wildcats have been penalized and have made some mistakes tonight. All right, Rodgers catches the football. Let's see. That'd be something that uh, Pacific could rush this ball in for a touchdown. They would have a a rushing yardage of a minus three yards and still score a rushing touchdown. That'd be pretty good. Claudius Wright with the pop. All right, first and goal from the one. Will the Wildcats give up a touchdown? Stay tuned. On first down, and uh, the streak is over for 1993. Howard Blackwell dances in for one. The Tigers are very happy. They're in a football game in Tucson. 16-12 the score. And now the conversion. What was supposed to be a lemming in Arizona Stadium turns into a caged animal. My goodness. Jeff Russell converts. And the Tigers are again within three. 16-13 our score. Just to make it weird, the rains begin again. We'll be back to Arizona Stadium. Well, here's the plunge. The first touchdown of 93 scored against Arizona. Howard Blackwell production. Gets some nice blocking up front. He's into the end zone by plenty. And another look. A nice delay and a good play to call with all the passing they've been doing in Arizona. You know, they can pass in that situation. There's Steve McLaughlin. We are wondering why he was not in the ball game. It's not been removed for any reason other than the fact that he has a hip pointer on his right hip. Of course, he's a right-footed kicker. And this might come into play. It's only a three-point game. If this ball game comes down to a field goal, it's going to rest on the shoulders of a freshman. And the rain comes down harder now. 
on this September 11th. Here we go again. The kickoff by Pacific. Troy Dickey is going to take it. Get some good blocks out across the 30-yard line. And Arizona has good field position to start the new drive. Well, after the fumble by White, it didn't take the Tigers very long to score the touchdown. Three plays, they went 14 yards, all of 44 seconds, with Howard Blackwell picking up the TD. Well, what you're probably going to see from Arizona with a change in coaching philosophy and throwing the ball more, a little more wide open offense that leads the uh, that goes along with it, you know, more chances of turnovers. Arizona was a very conservative team last year, turned the ball over very seldom. They were plus 11. This year, they're minus three already in turnovers in two ball games. The pitch to Taylor on first down, he's cut down. Got the line of scrimmage and a flag thrown. Grant Carter, number 38, the outstanding all Big West Linebacker makes the stop, and Arizona is penalized yet again. It's a rainy and, quite frankly, dreary night at Arizona Stadium, but <laughs> I think there's now an NCAA rule against it, but I think if the... On the offense, repeat first down after a 10-yard penalty. In the old days, coaches could run you after a game. I think if there weren't the NCAA sanction against that, they might be running tonight. It would constitute an extra practice session, the way the rules are written now. The Wildcats are lucky the rules are new, because I'll tell you back, in the old days, you paid you paid for this kind of stuff. 85 yards of penalties. That's uh, They get into trips tonight, which are their one major penalty away. There will be some discussion about that. All right, here's Love. Off tackle for a few. Again, with the rain coming down, and the more likely for a turnover here is you have to handle the, bas uh, handle the basketball, <laughs> handle the football. All right. if Arizona remains conservative now. Uh, they tried to pass down in this area last time they were down here. Big passing down, Rudy, second and 15 to go. All right, Dan White brings the Wildcats out after the four-yard game. Second down and 16, the ball's at the 27-yard line. A three-point difference between the two teams. Lovett and Taylor in the backfield. White shoots it out to Lovett. Good hard running by Lamont. Gets the ball marked. Mark it at the 37-yard line. And this, all of a sudden, is a critical third down with 12 minutes and 29 seconds to go. Arizona playing Pacific at home, game two of the season. And it's a three-point lead. Let's take one more look at the lock, block by Terry Vaughn. Boy, does he lay a hit number nine. And that might have Jimmy been a hole in the back. I think they're fortunate they didn't get a flag on that one. Big third down, as you indicated. Who would have thought? 16-13, Arizona ahead of Pacific. Blitz, blitz, blitz. That might be the only time Pacific has blitzed in this ball game. They've been very conservative with a four-man rush and zone. Big, big play for Pacific. Arizona has to kick. After two games, and now into our eighth quarter of football this season, there seems to be as many question marks about Arizona as there were at the start of the season. Matt Payton into the ball game. He's kicking into the rain, into the wind. Short punt, and it takes a Pacific bounce. Inside the 50-yard line, Arizona's going to down it in their own territory. And with the exchange on a muddy night, we'll be back. you have a pager. Yes, I use it so my business clients can reach me. Does your pager have statewide coverage like Tucson Paging? No. Does it reach Las Vegas or Northern Sonora like Tucson Paging? Well, no. Does it come in designer colors like these from Tucson Paging? No, it doesn't. Then you should call Tucson Paging at 747-8700. Say, do you work for Tucson Paging? As a matter of fact, I do. Thanks. I'll call right now. Say, I noticed you have a pager. What? 
Oh, guard dog. Oh, very scary. that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. <laughs> the secret to a strong finish is endurance. Introducing High Endurance, new from Old Spice. A breakthrough deodorant that doesn't wear out like the other guys. Here's proof. This is a day's worth of our deodorant. See how it outlasts the leading stick even after 24 hours? Now that's endurance. For the longest lasting, hardest working, the best deodorant stick, demand proof. Get new high endurance from Old Spice. You won't go far without it. Well, last week, Matt Payton in his first game averaged 41 yards punting. That was an 18 yard punt. Pacific in business, down by three. 11 minutes to go in the ball game, 11 minutes plus. The pass by Wheelahan is knocked down. Incomplete. If you're wondering about the rain, usually they say in a passing team, uh, the receivers have the advantage. They know where they're going. The defense have to react. I don't know if it's raining enough for that field. It's a little slick, but it's got to be a little wet on that grass. Good head of grass uh, on this Arizona field. A couple years ago, along with Purdue, was uh, voted the best playing football field in the country, Purdue and Arizona. Everyone in town can appreciate this. For the last three or four days, all the weather services have said there's no more rain. <laughs> That's so. Wheel of hand to throw. Fires. And the ball is completed. And that'll be enough for a first down. Weston, a freshman, makes a fine reception. The Tigers, I'm sure before the ball game, would have been grateful to make this a game. Well, here they are in the fourth quarter with this chance to go ahead. Weston makes a fine reception. Claudius Wright with them. Well, that was a missed pattern. Out on the far side. Claudius Wright. They've done it again. They've gone down their chart. That receiver is named Steve Neal. Now, he was not even on the chart. So they've done that several times tonight. Pacific, I think, is using everybody they've got tonight. Second down and 10 for Pacific. Ball at the 36-yard line. Fourth quarter, 16-13 catch. Wheelahan falls down. Just simply tripped over his left guard, Dan Weldon. Weldon was retreating to get into a pass-blocking position. And Wheelahan got tangled up. And then he went down. Arizona now has made a change. Chris Lopez was on a blitz here two plays ago. He's in an inside linebacker for Craig Boyer. We have not seen camp in the ball game, so Arizona really has rested most of their injured eight. They were hoping to be able to keep out of this ball game. Third and 15. See if the Wildcats come with the blitz. A little lob pass thrown too tall. Out of bounds. Greg Weston was the intended receiver. Jay Phillips with him, as you see, step for step. Craig Whalahan is looking at his play sheet. I wonder if a defensive tackle now would take a look at that when he tackles him. You know, take a, let me see your arm for a minute. <laughs> well, the story on uh, Whalahan is that when he got in his first ball game, he got so scared and forgot everything that uh, he had to come out. That was against ASU. All right, scouting in, knocks the punt. Let's see if it goes into the end zone. Well, that goes right for Arizona. And the Wildcats defense holds, and Arizona will go to work at their own 20-yard line when we return. John, how you doing? You know AutoZone customers are pretty special. I mean, they take great pains in doing a job just right. So they know exactly what they want. That's why we carry so many parts, and also why we price them so low every day of the week. Because you've got to admire a guy who will tackle a job like putting in a starter, a water pump, a rack and pinion, and you got to give a guy like that exactly what he wants, the right parts and the right price. 
This is the Dodge Cummins turbo diesel. This is its competition. When it comes to available diesel torque, payload, and towing power, nothing can touch it. Nothing from Ford, nothing from Chevy, nothing. And since you can get over $2,600 in option discounts, nothing beats our diesel savings either. Nothing. The intercooled Dodge Cummins turbo diesel. There's nothing like it. See it at your Dodge dealer now. Travel accommodations provided by Bon Voyage Travel. Follow the Wildcats to the UCLA, Cal, and ASU away games. Call Bon Voyage Travel at 797-CATS. Well, the Wildcats go from the WAC to the Big West and now to the Big Ten next week. We'll have it for you on our broadcast on Fox 11 KMSB, 1030 next Saturday night. The Wildcats and the Fighting Illini. On first down, give straight ahead with a discouraging result. Well, I think so. You know, Pacific really has been bolstered by the tempo of the football game. It hasn't been a fast kind of a game. And they've been able to stay close. They've been very good defensively. Arizona in this last quarter has had to start each drive inside their own 20. Got to be a little crucial. You only got a three-point lead. Fairly conservative. Don't want to give the football up here if you possibly can avoid that. Good football team right here would like to sustain some kind of a drive. Get a couple of first downs at least so you give your kicker a chance to go someplace. White's pass intended for Dickey, incomplete. Grant Carter got his paw on it. He is a great linebacker, Coach. Yeah, that was good for uh, Arizona earlier in the ball game. But right now, each play has a little more pressure attached to it because if you do make a mistake, it can lead to uh, be a costly one. All right, let's take a look. Number 38 fights off the block, sticks his hand up, knocks down the pass. Was Joe Smite? Uh, no, it wasn't. That was Moot Tagawai. It was blocking it. Arizona shows pass. Zone. Nearly picked off. White trying to force the third and 11 pass. Ball is knocked down by Eric Stavola. There's a young guy that was a teammate of Brandon Sanders at Helix High School. A lot of tough players come out of Helix High School. We just had Jeff Hammerschmidt up here early in the ball game. Tell us what a good young player this guy was. The reason the big schools avoided him, he's only 5'11". Everybody would ask him, how tall are you? He'd tell him six feet, but he really wasn't six feet. They're all looking for those six, two, and three, and four guys to play inside linebacker. Matt Payton getting the kick. Ball takes another Pacific bounce, and the Tigers will have a first down inside the 50-yard line for the second consecutive time after a short Arizona punt. 22 yards on the punt. But it's been all great field position. Again, as we indicated, a little more pressure on each play, a little more pressure on that kicker. He's realizing that he needs to get that ball out of there quickly and give his team as good a field position as he can. And that hasn't happened on the last two kicks. So whether you're running the football or throwing it or kicking it, probably the pressure is on Arizona, not so much on Pacific. They aren't expected to be in this position. Well, here they are. Wheel of hands pass, incomplete. Coming up in a hurry was Brandon Sanders. Oh, a great, great strong safety. And he's uh, reading that play a little bit better. Uh, Pacific has utilized that, I suppose, 10 to 12 times in this ball game. Arizona getting to it much quicker now, and that was Brandon Sanders, who took about three or four ball games last year to move into that position. Moved Mike Skurlock out. Skurlock went to uh, a, from an inside linebacker to a strong side to uh, a cornerback. Second and 10 from the 41-yard line. Motion by Rogers. Wheelahan throws, and 
and he completes it to Rodgers. Out of the backfield once again. Sanders applies the hit out of bounds. They move the ball down to the 36-yard line of Arizona. Pick up a five, third down and five. Let's take another look at, you're talking about the hard hitters from Helix High School. There's Rodgers. This is Mr. Sanders. How do you do? Great, strong safety. But again, Arizona's defense has been on the field a lot of minutes. And they've been running a lot of yardage across the field. Rodgers in motion. The throw to him, and he can't hang on. If he does, he's an excellent candidate for a first down. Split back formation and running that one half back in motion. Again, as we indicated at the top of the show, a lot like Stanford likes to do. Overload that zone quickly. Get three players out there very quickly. Jason scouting into the ball game, and you'll start to wonder if Pacific wants to try something other than a punt. No, it will be a punt. And no block. And Arizona gets a break. The ball lands inside the end zone. Touchback. Arizona takes over at the 20-yard line. Early on in the season, a non-conference game, playing a team from the Big West. And isn't it incredible, Coach, that you'd have to say this drive, beginning with nine minutes and seven seconds remaining in the game, is a big one already in this season? Well, that's the kind of situations maybe you're going to be in as the season goes along, and you'd like to have the kind of an offensive football team that could sustain drives from this particular area. Arizona did it with two minutes to go in the first half. They did it again in their first possession in the second half. They'd like to duplicate that right now, put this ball game away. All right, Taylor is going to go outside, cuts back, reverses his field, and he gets out across the 30-yard line. First down, great individual effort by Gary Taylor. He saw a wall of white jerseys and cut back across the middle. Well, that's a great first down play. You know, you'd like to get at least four yards on first down. That's usually an objective or goal of most offensive units. Big first and ten. That's the best... Uh, First down play Arizona's head in their last three possessions. Zalas with a stop for the Tigers. First and 10, 31 yard line. Pitch to Taylor again. Outside he goes, dragged down from behind. Excellent stop by you know who, Grant Carter. Well, as big as he is, an outside linebacker, it looks like he's got the same kind of speed uh, that you need to have to pursue and to penetrate, to drop back. He's about 6'3", 230 pounds. And that's the scouting report on him. Excellent quickness. He averaged 10 tackles a game last year for Pacific. Had 111. Led the conference in tackles. Pickup of one, second and nine. Love it. Good hard running, and that nets a big hard hit. So Lamont Lovett. Yeah, they're going to give him about eight yards. Well, this is where you'd like to be in your offensive situations. Third and short, or third and two. That was Nathan Young, number two, the free safety. Delivered the hit on Lamont Lovett. That was six foot, 209 pounds, beating 6'2", 195 pounds. High formation for Arizona, third and two, and the left side of the Pacific line jumped, or was it the Arizona side? Roderick Lewis, the tight end, may have jumped for the second time. Let's see. Good ball, ball strike on the offense. Well, make it 90 yards. That is not a happy man right there. Let's watch number 95. Well, it's gone from third and two to uh, third and seven. Just couldn't hold it. And Carter takes advantage of it. Well, it certainly changes the complexion of this series. Third down and seven, the ball at the 34-yard line. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remain in the fourth quarter. Pacific blitz in a similar situation. Oh, they're coming with four. White throws to Vaughn and incomplete. Well, they went to the vertical passing game, as it's now called. We used to call it going long. And Vaughn is not going to take the reception. Dimitri Gazelis with the defense, and the Pacific Tigers remain tough. 
Well, they do, and they tried to hit Vaughn right in the seam of that zone down the sideline. Not a badly thrown ball, but the defender got there about the same time the pass did. Matt Payton really needs to nail one now. He's had a couple of tough punts lately. Do-it-all man Jeff Russell at the other end waiting for Pacific. And he has this one, another wobbly affair. It's going to bounce and take a Pacific bounce. However, the Tigers, for the first time in a while, will have the ball outside their own 50, perhaps into their own territory, I should say. Well, even with the three not exceptionally well-hit punts, uh, Arizona's picked up some yardage as far as field position is concerned. Seven minutes and a six seconds. Three points separate the two teams. The pass. Wheelahan instead is going to run. Dives across for a pickup of about three yards. Out across the 40-yard line. The situation Arizona is in a lot like they were last year in four ball games that they lost. You're in a big play situation when you play this close, no matter who you're playing. You think of the ASU game, close. Big play, busted tackle for a touchdown. USC, the big play in a close ball game that made the difference in the loss. Baylor, defensive back, Keyson Johnson falls down twice, and that makes a difference in the game. So a big play, even though the defense has been tough. They go to Blackwell, and the pass is incomplete. You're just one play against uh, away from losing the ball game. Third and seven for Pacific. Ball at the 42-yard line. The Wildcats trying to hang on to a three-point lead, 16-13. Chuck Shelton will remember tonight's uh, visit to Tucson. The last time the Tigers came to this stadium, they were overwhelmed. A very big way. It's 38-14 Arizona. It wasn't that close. Wheelahan. Let the blitz. And it's that man, Harris. Wheel of hand. Down. Sean Harris. Second week in a row, that young man is having a good night. The Tucson High School Badger. Last week, he was involved in 10 tackles and had an interception. Now, he comes back and has a key. Blitz and a major loss for the Tigers. Arizona well, should be in pretty good shape when they get the ball back. Well, that'll be their best field position in this quarter. Looks like he got rolled on from behind as he got in there. And... All right, Harris grabs him. Well, Harris got a right, late coach. hit. Yeah, he's down right there. Teddy Bruski, number 68, couldn't yeah, stop. That's... Ouch. Okay, the punter is scouting, and Terry Vaughn awaits the punt in hopes of a return. Good punt by Scout. Vaughn is going to take it at the 13. That's where the Tigers put him back. Boy, there the win was really a factor. You indicated earlier in, the, in this quarter, big win going, and he really got into that one. And uh, Jason Scouten, coaches, you go back to Sean Harris, but Scouten you saw getting the hero's welcome. Last week, he should have been paid for overtime. He had nine punts against Texas Tech. He kicks off, he occasionally does long field goals. And he's an extraordinary punter, at least tonight. Well, he's probably got close to nine tonight. That was 56 yards for him. And Arizona's back where they have been. Maybe even a little deeper. All right, Taylor. On first down. Picks up some good yardage. And out of bounds that stops the clock with five minutes and 50 seconds to go. Taylor, certainly the brightest facet of Arizona's attack tonight. Well, he, has, he must be close to 200 yards. We don't know exactly right here, but... Uh... He was up over 150. He's had two 10-yard carries in this, uh, the last two series. 
He picks up the first down for the Wildcats. The ball now out to the 24-yard line. Billy Johnson has not returned to the game, so that means Taylor and Mount Lovett have been getting the uh, bulk of the opportunities. Taylor with some room off the left side, cuts back across the 35-yard line. That young man has another first down. Owen Taylor, the nose tackle, finally got a hold of him, number 72. And Gary Taylor starting to stack up some yards with 10 more yards. He's presumably got 169 yards. In a running back, you want a player with good vision, and Gary Taylor showing that tonight, Coach. And some good blocking in here. Again, a little tough to bring down. Solo tackles haven't been very effective against him. Clock runs, the pitch, love it. Off the right side, pounds forward for a couple of yards. A little more than a couple. They're gonna give him six yards for the game. That'll bring up second down and four for the Wildcats. The ball out to the 40-yard line, just beyond it. Well, I guess where Arizona is with five minutes to go, 4.59, that uh, if they can keep the ball on the ground and uh, Grind out yardage, use the clock. This will be uh, a philosophical approach to similar uh, what they did in uh, past years with their offense. All right, Jason Patterson, the JC transfer into the ball game again. Here's Lovett, off to the left side, picks up maybe one. Clock running, however. Four minutes, 32 seconds to go. You would have thought that would have been a dry, hot night tonight. By now, Arizona would have several of the reserve units in and have cleared the bench. Instead, they're struggling with a 16-13 lead. I don't know which team has a weather advantage. Uh, Pacific uh, and Stockton, that's pretty much the same kind of weather Tucson has, so I don't think that's a factor. Arizona, another big third down, about three. Tough yardage. Love it. Still on his feet. This is a great individual effort. He's got the first down. Oh, what a play. Grant Carter was in the Arizona backfield, had Lovett for a loss. However, Lamont reversed his field, kept his feet, and gets a big first down for Arizona. Well, this is where you'd like to have had a quick whistle if you're Pacific. All by his lonesome. Ball out to the 46-yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Love it, and Carter in the backfield. Carter with the football, picks up about nine. Make that Taylor, I'm sorry. I saw that two. I get hopeful after a while seeing that two in the back. It's actually 20 out there, Gary Taylor. He's got a nice rain bomb. Well, Arizona had 116 yards rushing last week, and I suppose they're gonna be close to uh, maybe 300 in this ball game. They had 200 total yards offense at halftime. Little trap. <laughs> Taylor reaches. He, he put the ball down at the 45-yard line, but they're going to mark his knees down at the 46. Jeff Dyrick made the stop. Yep young man who made his debut for Arizona tonight. Steve McLaughlin has a hip pointer on his right foot. His right hip. John Prasun. No, he does not have a hip pointer on his right foot. However, it affects his right foot. He has a hip pointer on his hip. For the record. All right, third down and one. Taylor having a great night tonight. Seven of his 26 carries have been for 10 yards or better. Out of the eye. Love it. Has enough for the first down. Now, Lamont Lovett stepped in and uh, really given Arizona 
a big boost in that offensive backfield. With all the backs hurt, we have not seen Billy Johnson return in the second half. That's Johnson, Carter, Levy. Clock runs, two minutes, 10 seconds remain in the football game. 16-13 in favor of the Wildcats. Trying to put this one away. Love it. Off the right side, across the 40-yard line. On first down. Picks up five yards. It'll make it second down and five. Direct with the tackle, and we'll take a timeout. Under two minutes to go in the ballgame, the Wildcats prevailing at the moment by three. 